refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up about it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We need their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. This is Colin McGuigan for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted to be joined by Harry Potter himself here, Frank Smith. I mean, that was a low Frank. blow, that was. No. And in Mexico, I'm called El Jalio Potpiro. I don't know what that was. Oh, that was mate. Horrendous. The comments are going to go off now, you know. No, no. People think I don't have a sense of humour. That was, wasn't even funny. First of all, you love these type of events. We spoke before. You're not, you're not as much into the actual fight. You prefer the spectacle. Talk to me about that spectacle tonight. Unbelievable. You know, we've been lucky enough to do events all around the world, some of the biggest shows in boxing over the recent, recent times, um, and to see, a, see an event like that. We always knew it was going to be big. You know, Canelo back in Guadalajara after 12 years, I think, of not boxing here. But it, they outdid themselves. Um, you know, the, the fireworks, the walk-on, the mariachi band, everything. Everything was brilliant. And, uh, you know, both guys put everything in the ring as well for 12 rounds, and that's the most important thing. How big is that for the company of Matchroom to be doing a stadium event in Mexico? It's kind of a bit different to what everyone else is doing, right? Yeah, but I think everything we do as well is different to what everyone else is doing. You know, we promote in 15 different countries the biggest shows. We promote 120 fighters from 10 different countries. You know, no one else is doing what we do in boxing. Um, and, you know, this just adds to it and shows another level of know what can be created and you know it's exciting because these are the things that keep you going these are the things that make sure we don't get complacent because it would be quite easy over the years to go we're really good at this you know carry on but it's about keeping improving and delivering you know more and more great nights and that was another special night that you know a lot of people worked very hard to put together from all different teams john Ryder's stock rose to him incredibly he lasted 12 rounds with canelo i spoke to eddie and he said that that will mean people in the division want John Ryder to make a statement. Do you think John Ryder stays around and do you think that there's some potential big fights and who do you think? 100%, you know, you look at him tonight, he, he was so fit and he, as the fight went further on, he got better and better, you know, he, he, um, he came more into the fight. You know, Canelo was getting, you know, tired and John was, just showed amazing fitness and great to see how, you know, they trained so hard in Tony's gym. And, you know, respect to Tony as well, because it's been a tough time for him. Obviously, had a good win with Cordina and then for John to have a performance like that. But, you know, we always knew what John was going to bring. He wasn't coming here just to go out and last two or three rounds, get a payday, go thank you very much and walk off into the sunset. He was always going to give it 100%. Um, and, you know, after that fifth round, how he carried on after that, I think it was the fifth round, wasn't it? Or... Yes, no? No, he slipped. Oh, the, the yeah. First, the yeah. Um, but in the fifth round, how he, you know, how he carried on. And he, every time as well, you know, so many people would just go, this is my way, you know, this is my way out. And we've seen it. But he kept on coming forward. He kept on throwing punches. He never, he never grabbed to survive. It was always keep attacking. Um, and you have to respect him for that. And yet, look, that's going to give him the opportunity now for many, many more big fights because people are going to want to fight him now. Eddie mentioned Gennady Golovkin. Is that a fight you think that is you're able to make into, or will you still be working with Gennady Golovkin going forward? Yeah, I've been speaking to actually Gennady Golovkin's team recently. You know, he's obviously been through the, he, he vacated the belts, but he still wants another fight. I, I would love to actually to see a Gennady Golovkin fight in Kazakhstan. You know, I, I, I bit, we went there previously to try and set something up, but that, that would definitely be something I'd like to see. But 100%, you know, we'd love to, to work with Gennady. We've had some great nights with him and we'd love to continue to do so. Canelo wants be ball next. Do you think that fight happens? It, it seems like a tough fight to make because of the weight stipulation, 168 or 175. Mm -hmm. Do you think it happens and where do you think it lands? I'd love it to happen. Um, I, I can understand both sides of from a, on the weight point. You know, Bivol says, I've beaten him at 175. I want my opportunity to become a two-weight world champion and undisputed at 168. And I understand Canelo completely. He doesn't want to be seen as... The only way he's going to beat him is at 168. He wants to go and do it at 175. So I can completely get it. Um, hopefully, hopefully we can make the fight. But let's see. You know, there, there's there's work to be done. Obviously, uh, that's one of the biggest points. Um, but let's see how it plays out. You know, we've had a lot of interest from the Middle East as well in that fight. 
Um, so yeah, we'll have to see how things go. Regis Progray announced that big sign and you were coy about it during the week. I had an idea and I actually pushed you on it and you still didn't tell me he was coming. When did that get over the line? I don't tell any anyone anything, but I'll be honest with you, it was only last night the contract was signed. Um, there was discussions going back and forward. Eddie met him earlier in, earlier in the week before he flew to Mexico. And yeah, it was only last night. You know, he had some big offers out there, but with Matchroom, he can be, you know, we're going to build him into the star he is. He'll be the A side. And he's not then just an opponent for one of these names on another promoter. Um, they'll be then coming onto our platform, you know, to make the fights as well. Now we've seen it and that's what will happen. So, you know, exciting for us in Regis Progre. He's a, he's a tremendous fighter. All kicks off June 17th with Liam Parra. Headlining June 17th yeah, headlining against June Liam Parra, yeah. New Orleans. Who else is going to land on that card? Uh, we're just working through it now. Um, in the next few days, we'll have the card finalised. It's obviously the main focus for us was getting the, the headline done, but a few few good, decent names going to be on the card. Connor Bain, come in. Eddie uh, teased it. Maybe, maybe, well, let's see. If he was on mm. that card as a co-main, who would it be against? I don't know. You have no idea of an opponent for Conor Bennett at the moment? Not, not today, not tonight. Like not I say, the focus was getting Regis Pro. Up until last night, we were still waiting to see if it was done. Then we clicked the fingers and everything got put together. Another signing that Eddie's give you credit for, Andy Cruz. In terms of that, how did it come about and how did you make that happen? Uh, I, we've been speaking to them for a while, actually. Um, I've been speaking to Jesse Rodriguez, his, his manager, who we actually worked with on Gamboa. And, you know, it's actually been going on for about six months. Eddie actually said that he DM'd him the other day because he didn't believe I was talking to it. I was signing Andy Cruz and he had to double check whether it was true or not. Do you want to call him over to clarify that? I'm not... Eddie, that's true, isn't it? You had to DM Andy Cruz to make sure it was the right person I was signing. Yeah, and not some lady pulled out there. I think give you props and oh, you signing. Not some random geezer. So you, and when he turned up tonight, I thought, thank fuck, it is the real Andy Cruz. <laughs> when, when will we see Andy Cruz, Adam? Where, where uh, will we find him? July, probably in the US. Where in the US? I don't know. Still to be confirmed, the, the, the venue. Uh, but July in the US. Frank, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it, mate. Thank As you, always, sir. Harry Potter. Thank you. Cheers, man. Refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I, I never shot up, up Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day.